Okay, so this video is kind of a follow-up to my last series of videos which were um, about rigging for Michigan salmon and steelhead. And in those videos I talked a lot about the, the leader setups for each of the individual techniques, um, whether it be stripping streamers, swinging streamers, or, or drifting nymphs and eggs, um, and other small streamers. Um, so in these videos I want to talk about the specific flies that I'm using for the techniques and get a little bit more into um, when and where I'm going to use these different techniques and uh, I'm going to do a salmon video which will be this one and then a second video which will focus more specifically on steelhead uh, so I'm going to kind of try and break the your typical salmon run down into stages and then give you a few flies and techniques that I use. So what's actually in my box, uh, you know, how I'm trying to target these fish. Um, but the three stages that I kind of consider uh, when I'm planning my fly box for, for Michigan or Midwest salmon um, are the first one being fresh run in the lower river. Um, so these are going to be fish that are on the move and then they're they're resting briefly in the deep sand holes in the lower river and uh, they'll kind of group up and in, into those holes uh, the second would be early run uh, pre-spawn so um, as the fish move higher into the river uh, they're getting into areas where they may eventually spawn or they may continue to go upstream but they're kind of getting into the spawning areas of the river they're not actively spawning and like I said many of them are still on the move uh, trying to get to the gravel that higher up in the system that, that where they will actually spawn and then the third stage being um, you know actively spawning fish uh, once a majority of the fish get into the stage and they're actively spawning or looking to spawn I'll usually you know change up a little bit to where I'm targeting the trout and the steelhead that are sitting behind the spawning salmon and you know you still will connect with a you know usually would be a, a buck a male salmon that's uh, sampling eggs behind a spawning female so you know, you may be targeting trout and steelhead, but you will hook up with, uh, with some, um, with some salmon that are kind of waiting to spawn or fertilize eggs. Uh, okay, so uh, those are kind of the three stages that that we're gonna go through. Um, so for the fresh run, the first stage, the the fresh run fish, you know, you can have great days uh, with uh, these fish in the lower river if you get lucky and and you hit a pot of fish in a, in a hole where you, you might have a bunch of fish that all came in at one time, you can get a lot of active bites on streamers, uh, you know, fishing the lower river. You know, I'm kind of talking like saying the Betsy, you know, mid to late August, early September kind of quali qualifies for this stage. You can have some really banner days, but you can also have days where you never run into that pot of fish in the section you're floating or, or waiting and you may only see one or two fish just cruise right on through and, and never find um, a group of fish to cast to but primarily you're looking for those fish that are holed up in the, the deep sand holes where you have them kind of jockeying for position and they might get a little bit more territorial because of the other salmon in the area and you know those are going to be the fish that are going to be a little easier to get them to chase a stripped streamer um so for flies with this um you know i've got a got a few sitting here um that you've been looking at in the camera view um the first one and i'll, I'll take the other ones out the first one's going to be a big uh double deceiver uh, this is in Fire Tiger. This is probably going to be the number one fly you see. You know, everyone ties it slightly different. Um, these ones are, you know, available on, on my store. Um, 
um, but this is the Fire Tiger version of the Double Deceiver. And you can see it's just a big, flashy, annoying fly. Big profile, lots of flashaboo mixed in through the body. And then I do a over and under wing of, of Crystal Flash to really make this thing pronounced in the water. Uh, it is articulated, so it's got good movement. And uh, so this is probably going to be option number one for most people uh, targeting um, king salmon, especially, but uh, really any any you know coho or king um, would probably go for that. Um, you can do different colors. Obviously, white and chartreuse is going to be a good color. Um, you can do a fly like this, which is black and chartreuse. Um, and this is a single, so a non-articulated version. So a little bit smaller fly if you're in smaller water and, uh, you know, or maybe get sick of casting the big double deceiver. Um, that can be uh, an effective alternative. And then uh, the, the last kind of option um, would be something like this, and this is a monster. And this one's been in the water, so the profile kind of looks matted down, but this is a big fly. Um, gonna be hard to even get it in view here. This is probably six or seven inches long. Um, this is a deceiver as well. Uh, this is multi-articulated, um, called a modern deceiver, and it's got uh, four or five articulation points in the body. So this thing really has a ton of movement. And as you can tell, it's big, huge profile, pushes a lot of water, and we've got a similar amount of flash and everything built into it. Um, so the the deceiver style flies, and I'll bring them all back out here uh, in different colors. So I've got the single, I've got the double down here, and then the the biggest uh, one, which is the the multi articulated um, modern deceiver. Um, these and you know mostly fire tiger, anything that's bright and annoying. Um, is going to be effective for, for this type of fishing. Uh, so that's going to be your primary flies that you're going to have in your box, several different colors and in the different sizes. Uh, that's going to be kind of your go-to. Uh, the next option uh, that I'm going to throw out there for this type of fishing, um, this kind of comes from the steelhead world, um, so um, it you know should be very effective for kings as well, would be Tommy Lynch's Drunk and Disorderly, and I'll bring out a couple of different ones here. Um, so I've got some of, uh, here's the actual Tommy Lynch uh, standard Drunk and Disorderly size. Um, these are phenomenal uh, stripping flies, great for, for pounding the banks and structure or looking for fish. And again, these are, you know, like your primary fly for stripping for steelhead in the fall. Uh, so I'll get a little bit more into these uh, in the steelhead video, um, but equally good um, if you're if you're looking for king salmon. Um, and so there's different variations that I'll get a little bit more into in the other video, um, but the the drunken disorderly is going to be uh, another great option to have a few colors in. These are kind of muted natural colors. They they make a fire tiger. They make some. Um, black and purple versions um, uh, but uh, that might be a little bit better suited for salmon um, but just so you have the basic idea having a few of these in your box would be good uh, and then that brings you brings me to game changers in general um, I really like the feather game changers and I'll bring a couple out here um, these are actually feather game changers. Uh, if you look at one of my past videos on interchangeable heads, um, these game changers are utilizing that system. Uh, so right now they have drunken disorderly heads on them. So um, really good, again, swim fly for, for stripping for steelhead and, and salmon um, for the sakes of this video. But I can interchange the heads so I can actually take off that D&D &D head and put on a standard feather game changer head if I just want a, a regular swim fly or if I'm not seeing any steelhead or salmon and maybe there's smallmouth in the river 
and I want to target smallmouth or trout, you know, resident trout, um, I could put on a, a standard feather game changer head. Uh, or if I want to dredge up, uh, you know, if I have some deep runs and holes, I could swap out the head for a sculpin helmet head and, and really get down deep and again look for, for fish that are going to be sitting lower in the water column. Um, uh, so I'm kind of putting those, um, both the actual drunken disorderly flies, uh, Tommy Lynch style, as well as my um, interchangeable feather game changer system as uh, my second group of flies that I would carry with me. So deceivers being number one and then the uh, game changers and drunken disorderlies is, is swim flies that I would have with me. And then last but not least, <clears throat> as far as style of flies uh, that I would use for stripping streamers for salmon would be uh, a jerk style fly. Uh, so this one here, again, Titan Fire Tiger, that's going to be real popular. Call You should have Fire Tiger in every, every one of these if possible, uh, for, for King Salmon especially. Um, so this is a jerk fly, kind of tied in the Gunner Brammer style, um, if you want to watch his videos on um, these kind of flat, vertically flat heads, um, epoxy heads. Um, so a jerk fly, something that's going to have a real erratic motion, uh, push a lot of water, a nice profile, and then again a lot of flash to, to try and make these fish angry and, and induce a, an aggression strike. Um, so that would kind of be my three main categories. So again, a deceiver style fly is going to be option number one for these fish. Really large profile, lots of flash. A game changer slash drunken disorderly style deer hair head um, would be option number two, so a swim fly. And then a jerk style fly I think would be appropriate for this as well. Okay, for the second stage of uh, salmon, fi salmon fishing here, which I'm going to kind of call early run fish, uh, pre-spawn, uh, this is going to be your best time to catch a lot of fish. Um, the fish are still fresh, and uh, there's enough, they're fresh enough that they're going to be active, still super hot and full of energy, you know, so a lot of fun to fight. Um, they're starting to get up into the areas uh, where some fish will spawn, um, you know, but a lot of them are still going to be on the move to get to the higher spawning waters where, you know, where that particular fish might want to spawn. Uh, but they're kind of up into the areas where there's some gravel and, and uh, eventually there will be some spawning fish there. Um, this is kind of where you will find them, you know, maybe stacked up below a dam or some other barrier uh, in the river. And, um, you know, so you're going to find more fish in the system, and but they're still fresh enough that, that they're going to be pretty active and, and territorial, and, and you might still get some aggression strikes um, on a stripped streamer. Uh, but that's definitely going to slow down. So stripping flies is going to slow down at this point. Um, you still might get some. Uh, but swinging flies, uh, especially kind of in the morning or, or low light situations, is going to be um, still very effective. At this point, you're trying to use your fly to kind of annoy the fish. Uh, you know, consistently swinging a, a big gaudy you know, tube intruder like this or a, a game changer intruder um, that I tie like this, putting that in front of a fish over and over again or maybe letting it hang on the fish's face is going to um, cause that fish to get territorial and, and angry and, and strike the fly. Um, so the best flies for this type of fishing, uh, swing fishing, which is going to be you know kind of the, the big method here in this, in this midsection to get legitimate hookups. Um, you're going to be primarily looking at large intruder style flies. So this is kind of, this is a tube fly 
it's kind of a standard intruder so I've got a, a back post with a, a thin body and then a big bushy uh, front post here lots of flash um, you know lots of bright colors so this is a, again a fire tiger um, color scheme I've got some barred rubber legs in here uh, some flowy marabou at the front um, there's a little bit of ostrich in there and uh, an ice dub to kind of finish finish off the head uh, so a big intruder like that um, in different colors here's another fire tiger one with a little bit more ostrich in it um, so this this one hasn't been wet so it's a little bit of a a puff ball but um, that'll slim down once it's wet and look a little bit more streamlined like this first one um, but again just a big annoying uh, brightly colored intruder style fly is probably going to be um, your best option uh, for swinging flies. Along that same line, uh, I tie these uh, what I'm calling game changer intruders. Uh, so they are overall profiled like an intruder, um, you know, with the, the flowy back tail portion and then a big bold front shoulder. Um, but what I do a little different is that body instead of being on a tube or uh, you know a skinny metal shank I've put in some um, game changer shanks in the middle to create a multi articulated fly these have killer motion in the water um, you know especially with all the ostrich here you're getting all that flowiness that you would get from a from an intruder tube like the first ones I had out but you also have a great swim motion in the body because you don't have that just rigid uh, shank or tube body so you're getting a ton of action with you know just slight current you know will make these things really move around the other reason I like these is that if you come into a situation where you need to you can strip these like any of the other swim flies, use it like a regular game changer and just start stripping it off the banks and off a structure and they work equally well in that situation um, so they're a very versatile fly to have in the box so I like to have these in a, in a multitude of colors so I've got a uh, copper olive gold or golden copper olive um, I've got a black and purple and then I've got a white and chartreuse and then I usually also keep a um, kind of white, blue, and pink, uh, which I would say would kind of mimic like a rainbow trout coloration um, as well. I just don't, I lost it uh, here at my last fishing trip and, and I haven't retied it yet. But uh, the bodies are made primarily of polar flash and ice dub. So they have, you can see even with just this light here, um, on the camera that they just really light up even the black has a ton of ton of color in it so these are great king salmon flies great coho salmon flies and they can be swung or stripped which which makes them really effective um, so that would be kind of my second option and then um, the third kind of category that I'm gonna go with here is gonna be your deep diving kind of dredging flies uh, so I've got some swing leeches um, are the black ones here um, so heavily weighted up front and then basically a leech pattern um, these ones I've added a bunch of flash and a composite loop into the shoulder um, just to give them you know whatever light is in the water um, at the depth that these are swimming you're gonna get some reflection so you're gonna get a nice leech profile but also some some flash there to uh, hopefully cause a salmon to strike and then um, bigger I won't call this one an intruder it's kind of like an intruder style uh, with a you know with the weight up front uh, it's a single post intruder um, I, there's not a, really a name for this one but it's just got a lot of um, movement components some flash components and then the weight which is going to keep it down and the other thing about this one which is a good idea if if you can fit it into your to your salmon streamers or swing flies for salmon would be 
Um, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's got a rattle, a glass rattle built into the body. So anything you can do to add an annoyance factor um, to a strip or swing fly um, is going to be a good option. And then as you get a little bit closer to spawning time or a spawning area, I like to do flies that have eggs or beads built into them. Um, so this one, again, a single post intruder with some uh, barred magnum flashaboo and a um, flashy, you know, polar flash and an ice dub composite loop uh, single post fly. And then on my trailer hook, I've used a bright orange um, bead, you know, that you might float by itself if you were indicator fishing. Um, kind of built into the body of this fly as a hot spot. And uh, so as you get, you know, to where there's some fish spawning, having an egg component in the fly uh, can really make a difference uh, when you're swinging for them. <clears throat> okay, and the third and, and final stage I'm going to distinguish here um, as far as fly selection for uh, salmon fishing here in Michigan is going to be uh, the actual spawn, so um, the time of year, you know, typically, you know, late September and all through October, you know, you're going to have the majority of the fish in the system are spawning or spawned out and are dying or are, are you know, fish waiting directly behind spawning gravel looking to spawn. Uh, so this time of year you've got the highest number of fish in the system um, almost all the fish that are going to have you know come into the river are still there uh, you know in some function or some phase of spawning and dying um, but so you've got a bunch of fish in the system but most of them are really only focused on spawning or or they're you know have spawned and are are just kind of waiting to die so you you may not there may be a bunch of fish in the water but there may not be a ton of fish to target necessarily from uh, the perspective of legally hooking you know a biting fish um, so it's important here to say that you know we want to leave the spawning fish alone um, fish on gravel should not be should not be interrupted, I guess. Uh, and, and really, I, personally, I'll extend that to fish behind the gravel that are, you know, usually going to be your males, uh, you know, looking, waiting for the female to finish so that they can um, fertilize the eggs, you know. So I'll try and leave, you know, leave the salmon alone in the areas where there's active spawning fish. So for the flies, um, this is kind of my salmon and steelhead box, so I've got a lot of flies over here, um, you know, kind of smaller egg patterns. These are mostly flies I'm going to use for steelhead and steelhead season. They just happen to be, you know, in the same box. Um, but when I'm, you know, during the salmon spawn, I'm going to stick to, you know, probably eggs more out of this row here on these bigger eggs, brighter eggs. Um, that are going to imitate active, actively spawning salmon eggs. Um, so bright orange um, apricot, uh, which really is like this color, but in a bigger size. Um, you know, you can get into like some of your chartreuse stuff in a larger size or pink. Um, but yeah, pink, orange, and, and yellow probably, you know, going to be the primary colors and in these larger sizes you know 8 to 10 um, I think is appropriate for uh, to match a king salmon egg and uh, so those are going to be um, you know probably the egg flies that I would go with and then the other thing you know that you could dead drift and, and this is effective really during all stages of the run um, but I you know kind of put it in this this stage because I'm talking a little bit more about dead drifting um, but uh, egg sucking leech is probably the number one fly overall fly to have in your box for 
for especially king salmon, um, but cohos too. Um, it's a super versatile fly. You can use it from, you know, if you're stripping flies through a big pod, fresh, real fresh run fish, an egg sucking leech is going to work in that situation. Um, in the middle of the run, when you're swinging flies, you can swing this fly and it'll be effective. And then during the active spawn, you can dead drift this thing. And again, you're going to pick up fish because it's got the egg on the head and, and still a lot of flash and a little bit more imposing body than, than your, you know, standard just uh, egg fly. So, you know, I'm, I've kind of put it at the end here and it's, you know, not the... Uh, prettiest fly in the world or the most exciting fly in the world. Um, I mean, it's a woolly bugger with an egg on the front of it, um, so it's not the funnest thing to talk about, but an egg-sucking leech is... I've caught more salmon on the egg-sucking leech than probably every other fly combined. Easily, really. Um, you know, many times over, probably, you know, this is going to be more effective. So my main uh, colors are going to be um, a black woolly bugger with an orange head uh, and then a purple body with a pink head. Um, so that kind of, you know, kind of draws the salmon video to a conclusion here. But, uh, you know, hopefully this video will inspire you to, to get out and, and, and try and catch these these awesome fish that we have here in the Great Lakes, um, particularly on the west side of the state. Um, you're going to get a lot of people that are going to tell you you can't catch these fish legally or legitimately um, because they don't eat in the rivers. And hopefully this gives you enough information to know that, that that's just false. It's, it's plain and simply false. They will they'll bite from before they enter the river all the way until they're done spawning and and they and they're really you know on their last legs you can get them to bite flies so um you know try and respect the resource try and respect the fish and uh you know you'll be rewarded with you know nice legitimate big strikes from these fish and and it'll be some of the best fishing you can have uh, in our state and in our region. Um, so that'll do it for this video. Um, I'm going to do a very similarly outlined uh, video for steelhead. Uh, some of the flies are going to be different. Some of them are going to be the same. Some of it overlaps. Um, you know, there's going to be uh, some different information in that video. So uh, look out for that. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.